hi sweeties how are you doing welcome to naya sim and thank you all so much for all the love and support hope you all are doing great so i came across this video where this actually came out to say that uh people think that he is racist and i am asking why would people think that you are racist i mean what made them think that you may have uh, portrayed something or did something that made them think that you were that because people cannot just come out and call you that you probably may have shown them something and then he went further to say that uh he can't say that he is proud to be white and i am saying who said you cannot be proud you really can be proud of whom you are like why can't you be proud of whom you are the truth is that these people really want to be victims so bad and went further to say that uh why is it that uh he is being blamed for something that uh he was never a part of and i am like what is it that you were never a part of and people are blaming you for what did you do right because i am trying to get where he is coming from now let me tell us something it is 2024 right and some people really want to be victims so bad and i am asking why is it that you people are so like you know so eager to be victims i really don't understand that but it is what it is and then he went further to explain that why is it that he can't get a job now because of the color of his skin? And I am asking, what is the color of your skin? And why would you not get a job? Are you referring to us that we don't get a job because of the color of our skin? Or you're telling us that you as a cannot get a job because of the color of your skin? I mean, I am trying to understand where he's coming from. Like he is trying to tell us that people are no longer hiring white people. Let's get into this. I'm on my lunch break, so it's time to rant. One of the reasons why I think it's so difficult to foster solidarity among oppressed, marginalized individuals is because for some marginalized people, <clears throat> uh, creating solidarity with their fellow oppressed person would mean acknowledging their marginalization and thus acknowledging how vulnerable they are to being exploited by external forces. So in other words, acknowledging your oppression and acknowledging that your oppression is valid and that it's being caused by, for example, white supremacist structures or classist structures, acknowledging your um, difficulties would also mean acknowledging my difficulties as an equally yoked oppressed person. And if I'm acknowledging my difficulties, then that means I too am likely to be exploited by these systems that are also exploiting you. And for many, many marginalized people, they just cannot reconcile that notion. They just cannot reconcile that danger of being equally exposed to oppressive systems, to oppressive infrastructures. I think this kind of also relates to my earlier discussions about how many of our elders in the Black diaspora aren't actually interested in building generational wealth or actually interested in improving the lives of those who come after them. I think this relates to that a little bit. This is one of the reasons why I see so many of us hop on social media and talk down on other poor people because let's be very honest with ourselves, there are 99% of us and 1% of billionaires. There are more of us who are not billionaires and who are thus more vulnerable to being exploited by class systems that oppress us, that commit wage theft, that uh, lay us off with impunity, that render us unhoused, that render us uh, without access to food and health care, right? So we, in an effort to deny how vulnerable we actually are, we instead point the fingers at one another and we attribute things that are actually societal policy failures and turn them around instead to be individual moral failures. So if you're a member of a marginalized or oppressed class, and that is most of humanity, and you're someone who walks around saying, no, there's no such thing as X, Y, Z. I don't experience that because I have X, Y, Z degree. I earn X, Y, Z at my job. I live in this particular zip code. Um, please understand that acknowledging the marginalization, acknowledging the disadvantages or the oppression of your fellow oppressed brother or sister <clears throat> does nothing to you. In fact, um, oppression thrives in isolation. It thrives in silence and it thrives in shame. So acknowledging our oppression and acknowledging just how vulnerable we are under these oppressive systems is actually a strength more than it is a weakness. The weakness comes in trying to deny that these very oppressive systems exist and oppress all of us more than we're up that I'm proud to be white. People would comment that I'm the most racist person in the world. All right, imagine being blamed for something that you were never a part of, okay? So also, on top of that, imagine that you can't get a job now 
because of the color of your skin. Like literally, they tell you that we we are not hiring any white people right now. We need more people of ethnicity here. Huh? Imagine being straight and white and Christian. You're like the triple threat of hatred. Like, I can't even laugh at this video, but I can because that is exactly how I used to think. I used to say white, straight, Christian males are the only people that are being discriminated against in the United States of America in 2024. Like, imagine wanting to be oppressed so bad. Imagine diversity, equity, and inclusion feeling like discrimination and oppression. And no, you shouldn't feel guilty about these sins of our ancestors no, it's not your fault. What is your fault is that in 2024, you're still putting out videos with this much ignorance in it. That's what you're responsible for. You see, because you're doing exactly what our ancestors did, just in a different form. You're centering yourself in the narrative. You're making it all about you. And yes, white people can still get jobs. White, straight, Christian males especially. The problem is you can no longer be white, straight, Christian, and mediocre males and get this job. You didn't not get the job because you were white. You didn't get the job because you just weren't qualified. And that's what happens when you expand opportunities to more people. When you widen the pool, the likelihood of other more qualified people Applying for that job is going to be much higher than when you just gave it to a certain demographic of people. So I would suggest that you step your game up. Stop being the victim. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps and accept personal accountability. And P.S. White pride has always been censored in white supremacy. Black pride and brown pride was surviving that oppression. So yes, that is why we say you should not be proud to be white. You can be proud of your heritage, your ethnicity, your nation of origin, but if you're proud of your whiteness, you're just... This is a very good question. How quickly in my deconstruction phase did I find happiness? It's also a loaded question. I found peace almost instantaneously. For those of you who don't know, I'm an ex-Trump supporting conservative who joined a white supremacist organization while incarcerated, not because I felt like I had to or needed protection, but because of my politics at the time. It was the height of the Black Lives Matters movement and Trump campaigning for president. And during that time, I felt like white, straight Christian males were under attack in the United States of America. I felt like we were being discriminated against. Fortunately, I met a person by the name of Rashawn Clark who taught me differently. And I read a book by Michelle Alexander called The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness, and it forever changed my life. And when I read that book, every contradiction that I had been living was reconciled. I realized that I was not a bad person or an evil person who needed to become good, but I was basically a sick person who needed to become well. I was uneducated and I was ignorant. I learned that there are many well-intentioned people who are filled with racist, xenophobic, sexist ideologies unbeknownst to them. And when I started following a bunch of different creators and reading a bunch of different books on these topics and I began the deconstruction process, I learned a lot of terms that I never knew before, one being microaggression. And I realized that I do every single one of them. I check every box. So am I willing to humble myself and learn a new way? Or do I double down on my ignorance, dig my heels in and continue to fight? I chose the path of peace. Unfortunately, though, I didn't find happiness until I started building new relationships. And the biggest obstacle to finding happiness was the fact that every relationship I had, every person in my circle of influence thought exactly the same way that I used to think. And ultimately it impacted my personal life the most because I was no longer the man that they knew. I was no longer the husband that they married. I was no longer the friend that they got to know. I was like this brand new person and many people didn't like it. So I had to find my tribe. I had to find the people who do like me for the new person that I've become. 
And truth be told, initially that was hard because so many people were skeptical, especially knowing my past, which is to be expected. So for a while it was lonely. I felt like a man on the island by himself with no friends, nobody to communicate with. And this platform ultimately helped change my life because this is where I met my new girlfriend. This is where I met the majority of my friends now who I also call family. Because in the community that I live in, the majority of people do not think the way I think right now. And that made life very difficult. But for the first time in my life, I can say that I'm at peace and I've found true happiness. You ain't gonna find nobody better to make a peanut butter sandwich than me. The other side, they don't want you to have no peanut butter sandwiches. They want to take away your rights to have your peanut butter sandwiches. But here, you can have peanut butter sandwiches every day for free. I don't feel any type of way of making these sandwiches. I can make 24 more of these sandwiches. In fact, I can make 20, 24 more of these sandwiches. Hey, Laura, I'm Crystal, and people like you can't stand people like me. <sighs> you ready to go viral? I always wanted to be a star. That way I could afford as many peanut butter sandwiches as possible. And with your help, Laura, I'd be able to get as many peanut butter sandwiches as possible with this video. You know what we gonna call this video, Laura? We gonna call it reparations. Because my supporters are gonna make sure this video goes viral. That way it haunts you for the rest of your life. That way your children can see it. And your children's children will see it. Your black friends, your black co-workers, your black associates. And hopefully they can get a peanut butter sandwich with whatever money I make from it. Bye, Laura. So let me get this right. Crystal Green Screens, a video, mind you, that is not edited or altered in any fashion, shape, or form. It is the raw video of what this other lady uploaded. And she just reposted it, said a little bit, didn't say too much, but said enough. And y'all are mad at her. Y'all are calling her a watermelon muncher a chicken eater and told her to go buy some bananas. Well, her best friend bought the bananas. Now what? Now what? Now, cause we honestly, that's kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, y'all ain't chew like y'all thought y'all did, but it's, it's funny. It's a look, cause y'all want, y'all want to go there? Thank you, friend. And I got my own bunch. So if y'all gonna call her watermelon munchie, y'all gonna have to call me one too. If y'all gonna tell her to go buy some bananas, her best friend gonna buy the bananas. If y'all gonna call her a chicken eater, I'ma have to be a chicken eater too, point blank period. Is it not ironic that the people that don't like what Crystal said are now responding with racism? The group of people that feels like she was wrong, that feel like what she did was wrong, what she said was wrong, are now responding to her with racism. Y'all can't tell her, hey, well, you know, this is why you're wrong. Like, these are the reasons why you're wrong. All y'all are doing is responding with racist stuff. And by the way, she don't give a damn. And that just came out of her mouth. And I don't I give a damn. Hello everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Exposing the Races. Today we have Lauren Howd, who posted this video. You ain't gonna find nobody better to make a peanut butter sandwich than me. The other side, they don't want you to have no peanut butter sandwiches. They want to take away your rights to have your peanut butter sandwiches, but here, you can have peanut butter sandwiches every day for free. I don't feel any type of way of making these sandwiches. I can make 24 more of these sandwiches. In fact, I can make 20, 24 more of these sandwiches. I just know this bitch wiped from back to front. <laughs> So I saw this video days ago when Lauren first posted it. And I must say, Lauren, you're very fucking lucky that I was in the Hamptons working with my nanny family. Because being though I was at work, I couldn't get into that ass the way that I wanted to. But baby girl, I'm home now. <laughs> now I saw that video on your TikTok and Instagram before you deleted it like the little bitch that you are. And people were in the comments saying, oh my God, this is so funny. This is so true. Trump 2024. You're liking these comments. You're responding to these comments. You're saying, oh my gosh, yes, we love Trump, blah, 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 blah. Mind you, your ass lives in fucking Canada. I'm going to hold your hand with a napkin in between when I say this. Your ass might be weirder than even Jennifer Lynn Lopez. <laughs>
from the fucking god awful black scent to hating from outside of the club your ass should have stuck to your hobby of reviewing crumble cookies but since you didn't your life is crumbling before your eyes and you <laughs> Now you've since deleted your social medias, but I want to make sure your digital footprint is forever. So here is your TikTok. Here is your private account, which last time I checked is still up. Your Instagram and your Facebook. Now, Lauren, what did we learn? <laughs> <laughs> Stick to the cookie reviews thing because being racist ain't shit sweet about it. Hope this helps. Peace and love. Talk to you later. So this is all I got from this video. And the truth is that I really do not understand how some of these people really want to be oppressed so bad. Yeah, from the first man that started the video, that was like, if I were, I mean, like, it's just really crazy how they also do not want people like me to shine. I mean, like, because, I mean, everything is supposed to be about them, right? And that is what it's been all this year, but the dance or the music is already about to change. And I hope they are like, you know, very much ready for what it's coming, right? And now when we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, you definitely will find out that some people are not keen with it. I mean, some people want it to be all about them. But then how do you want something to be all about you? I mean, it's really going to be diversified, like, you know, diversity, everybody must be included. And the fact that you people keep telling us that are uh, I mean, how do you expect me to pay for what I don't know? Like, you know, it was not the one that did it. I mean, why do you people keep making all this comment? Because this isn't kind of becoming very old. I am so used to you people saying all this. I mean, I was not there when it happened. And we are being held responsible for whatever that happened. And you, that you say you are being held responsible. What have you done or what are you doing to make sure that what they did back then and what is happening now are just too different then? I really just want to understand because it looks like you all are not making any different and you all are still the same. Like, you know, there is no different. You are more also the same thing as the other people because for you to come out on a rap like this, that even already shows your kind of person. And now why is it that, I, yeah, I actually love it how the second woman was like, you know, that a lot of them do not even want to like, you know, come together with black people or like marginalized group because some of them feel like, uh, like, you know, they just do not want solidarity with one another because if you, it's like them acknowledging that uh, they are at the same time vulnerable and uh, how uh, affected they are means that uh, they already understood that something is happening to them, but they like, you know, always trying to exclude themselves when some certain things happen. And then black people are always at the forefront. That is one thing I love about black people. When something is happening to them, they are going to scream. They are going to shout. You will hear it. But when something is happening to them, they are always on. The, she is very correct. They are always hiding. Why? Right? Because they do not want to come out. And it's like, it's Asians are going through this. They don't want that. I remember when they said that it is not in our culture to speak out. Now it is all in our culture to speak out. The truth is that some of these people really want to be, I don't know what to say. They just really, especially, they just really want to keep being right to the face towards people that look like me. And which is not even getting them anywhere because we already understand and know how they operate, right? You all can quit already and join the movement to make sure that uh, everything is working accordingly or for everybody. And also looking for a way to dismantle the system that is oppressing my own people because I am more of my own people and all that. And for the white woman who come out to say Kamala Harris talking to a black uh, crowd, you are really very silly and that already shows your kind of like what you people are made of for you to come up here to start like black sin and the rest of it 
you are doing horrible. You all can do better and stop coming online every day to make a mess of yourselves. And now look at all this video. One thing with all this video is that it's, I mean, like in the next how many years, you will still say it online. I mean, you all can do yourselves good by like, you know, not disgracing your families and your children. I hope they have shame, you know, because some people do not have shame and they do not care about you all can do better for your own reputation, right? See you all in my next video. Bye for now.